my relationships used to end at a certain pattern there was a certain pattern in my life deep down my inner man was screaming for change this is something i can tell everyone god will never abandon you god will never leave you it is people who leave god it is people who go out from god and they go but god will never leave you no matter what you Now in 2017 I decided I need a new life I need a new start I need a new everything I didn't want the partying lifestyle I didn't want the drinking lifestyle I w- I was trying to find myself back and trying to find new life a new hope again but in this whole situation I did not involve God to help me I wanted to do it on my own and i had tried before to come out of all these sexual addiction issues i had but i couldn't be able to come out and i still did not approach god for help because i was thinking now god wants nothing to do with me and i remember that time my sister would try to preach to me i could not listen to her she tried talking to me about i did not want to listen to her and she would remind me oh nash how you used to love god how you used to even talk to us about god and then i would snap at her i would get so angry like why are you reminding me of all these things that you know it's because i was now a prodigal daughter i had now completely gone out of the presence of god my conscience was dead at this point on and uh because of the desensitization and everything because of pornography and all that so now I dropped the drinking I dropped the partying lifestyle I would fall once in a while and find myself as a smoke to do the few of my friends but at the same time I was like I'm trying to get things right so I managed to stop the partying drinking lifestyle and all that but there was this struggle of pornography and masturbation that had been with me for a very long time at this point on it had been some several years now but I couldn't get out of stop from all that so eventually i used to attract this same kind of guys they are the ones that would not stick around they will be there for a moment even they will leave me telling me oh you're such a good lady you're such a good chick but they're telling me that when they are leaving me so i used to attract that and even this guy that i got in 2017 at that point i was not looking to get into a relationship I was not looking for a boyfriend I was just looking for a fresh start and at that moment I remember I just I started comp- contemplating dating again although I had none of the pattern in my life a, pa- a cycle of brokenness is how I refer it to right now it was just always you know relationships I used to try and then I knew they would end up and they would end up in a certain way I was start certain that the guy would just disappear and abandon me. So at that moment, I decided, you know, when rejection speaks the loudest in your life, you will find yourself doing the same thing, falling out of grace again and again. So I really desired to be loved. I really desired to have somebody to love me. So I I accepted, you know, again it was based on lust. It was not based on a good foundation. It was another sexual relationship just like the others that I had had before. And um uh, I started I knew after the after the sexual relationship, after the sex and all that, and now started timing the relationship. No, you know what? Let me just time in the next few weeks this guy will start behaving funny and then he'll start growing distant and then he will leave me. I was used to that pattern. So I timed and exactly at that moment the guy started behaving funny just like the rest that i had had in my life before they started behaving funny so he started behaving funny and uh now i started thinking of a, of an escape plan because the other relationships i tried escaping but i was always too late so this one i knew i have to escape from this it's just the same kind of foundation that i had before so i started way when we like escape you know when you like turn away from this relationship and then i remember it was on august that i started having this inner inner instinct like i must be pregnant again you know my periods are late i must be pregnant again 
and people will be like some people as you're watching my testimony are like how can you get pregnant again let me tell you if you do not deal with the root issues of as to why you keep on falling you will continue to fall you need to deal with the root issues the root causes of what makes you to fall time and again so i had not dealt with the root issues i had tried to sweep them under the carpet i never involved god and sometimes you need a higher power to deal with these things and the only higher power that is true is jesus christ so i never brought jesus into my struggles so periods went later and then i was like i started telling the guy the first pregnancy i never told the guy that i was pregnant because we were not in a good place so this guy i told him i think i think i'm pregnant and he was like are you sure i'm you know you need i don't think you're pregnant so i did i couldn't wait anymore the anticipation so i did a pregnancy test and they, there were two lines and one was very faint and i was like what so when i started having the morning sicknesses it's when it hit me that i am pregnant but because of what i had gone through with abortion abortion was such a terrible thing i decided you know what i'm keeping this one i'm not going to have another abortion i'm not going to go through what i did i can't make this mistake twice so i decided i'm going to keep the pregnancy i'm going to carry the shame because obviously when you're pregnant and you're not and you're not uh married people is question you little by little that is when my deliverance was slowly coming because now i got exposed you're now pregnant people are seeing you pregnant and they know you're not married they're looking at your hand you don't have a ring so it was a way that i was being exposed from the struggles that i was having from all the secrecy that i had built up the exposure now came at that moment and even though my friends some of them tried telling me oh nasha you sure that you want to keep this kid i was like yes i'm not going through another abortion i don't have the courage and i don't have the stamina to go through another abortion so i tried hiding my tummy i i carried my pregnancy with a lot of shame and secrecy you know people ask where is the father of the child nobody even knew the guy that i was with that time because there was nothing really um solid between me and him because i remember at a point he asked what if i marry you and then i'll be like marry me because of pregnancy but honestly you don't love me i remember i told him that straight to the face and he was like oh, okay and he didn't want to talk about that story again but i had really gone through so much rejection so even if he did love me perhaps i wouldn't tell because i knew rejection was the only thing i was facing at that moment and it was a lot of shame because the guy was not very supportive he wasn't there for me emotionally speaking financially speaking i used to do everything you, you know he didn't he didn't refuse and he didn't really come close at the same time there was not that caring touch that someone usually has so i was in and out i was really at that point now that i'm pregnant i want him now to be around as much as i wanted to end the relationship now i want him to be around and now things are not going that way also so i it was really really hard for me and the shame that i was feeling at that time and i remember i my sister i asked my sister i can't break this news to my dad you need to come and tell my dad and my sister came all the way and she told my dad this and this and this and this is what has happened and my dad was very supportive i thank my dad so much because of that at, at first of course like any other parent he was shocked he was like feeling bad like how could you let this happen and all that he did try to question me to know who's the father of the baby but i didn't even want to give his identity because it's not something i was proud of remember it was a relationship that i wanted to live i knew it was unstable and dysfunctional just like the rest that i had had in my life before so i decided okay you know what i'm going to overcome this i'm going to do this and when i found out the gender of the child was a boy i was very excited because i had faced so much rejection at this point on that i decided you know what this boy will love me the way i desire to be loved so i i planned my life around him despite the shame despite the confusion i used to wonder whether i can make a good mom for this kid because i have so many things that are going around in my life i have all these addictions that i'm struggling with but i was like how can i even become a mom to this kid but i still encouraged myself you know what he's a boy is going to love me so come 2018 i gave birth to rainhold i just labored for a few hours which i thank god for he was four kgs and i'm telling you compared to abortion and labor 
labor was not that painful for me abortion was extremely 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 painful and you know the pain of of a childbirth just lasted a few hours the pain of abortion lasted three weeks so for me i was like hey this one is better it's better off to give birth so i started feeling i started remembering the memories of the other child that i had aborted and all that and i would feel guilty the guilt did not really leave me even after getting another kid so i remember i got discharged from the hospital and i came home and that night i was so restless i was restless i was wondering like i was because reinhold number one had stopped um breastfeeding he didn't want to breastfeed he was just sleeping if i tried to wake him up to breastfeed he would really fight me that boy was strong as <laughs> i never knew newborns could be that strong and you know i was just a new mom so i don't know what to do i'm full of confusion i'm afraid of the child because they look so fragile they are so tiny so i remember i was restless i was just feeling there was this anguish in my spirit because it's as if a new world was going to be forming in my spirit and i was like okay so I kept on wrestling with him. I would wake up. I would try to make him breastfeed. He would cry. So at 3 a.m., immediately I've been discharged from hospital. My son cried and then I woke up and I tried to breastfeed him. He refused. But this time he opened his eyes and he looked at me with the most beautiful stare, with his most beautiful eyes. And I remember I was like, wow, Rainy. I now had shortened his name from Rainhold to Rainy. Because I had called him Reinhold after German theology and I studied him in campus. So there was still part of me that was yearning for God. Even though I was so strung out at this point on. So I remember I would tell Rainy please breastfeed. Rainy please breastfeed. But he wouldn't tell God please make him to breastfeed. So that was the last time he I saw him alive. Because when I slept and I told myself let me sleep for 20 minutes. Then I will try to make him breastfeed. But I let's just say i was tired and i slept for a very very long time 